All right, so uh, I'm on a bit of an off day here, and I decided, it, oh, it's beautiful out. So I decided that I was going to get out and look for some records, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I'm at a newer spot I haven't been in before. Let's see what's inside. found a super rare stack of records. Check this out. That's right. Herb Albert's T1 and Brass Going Places. I think I've just scratched the surface. <laughs> What's up, VC? Bob here. Welcome to Vinyl Finds on the Bob Bradley YouTube channel. This is number 33. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, 33. Been out looking for records, among many other things. Found some. We're going to get into them right now. Quite a few. So, got a lot to talk about. So we're gonna we're gonna get right into it. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> As you can see from the top of the video, I went to uh, some uh, peddlers malls, antique type uh, malls, record stores. 
I uh, initially went out because I was on Instagram and I saw a stack of Misfits records being posted at one of my local stores. So I jammed down there hoping that uh, the copy of Da Da My Darling was an original copy. It was not. Uh, a bunch of, you know, um, unauthorized releases, um, unofficial, and uh, stuff like that. Nothing that I was really that interested in. I have a lot of original Misfits records. I would like to have the, Di the original Da Da My Darling. I'll get it. I'll get it. Anyway, um, but I did hit a large uh, amount of dollar records, and in those dollar records found this, boom, Ricky Lee Jones. A lot of people on the VC have uh, showed this album, and she seems to be smoking possibly a clove on the front here. She has a beret on, very hip. Steve Gadd plays the drum. Steve Gadd, that's Steve Gadd, the drum virtuoso. Plays drums on this record. Um, good record. Worth a dollar. Uh, no matter, you know, no matter where you're at in the world, this, this thing is worth a dollar all day long. Pretty cool. Really clean on Warner. Uh, you know, it's a buck. I can't, you know... Moving right along. Last week, uh, showed a little Eagles. Talked about what my favorite Eagles record was, etc., etc. This is a lot of people's favorite Eagles record. Desperado, uh, with the soft touch um, sleeve here. Obviously, it's in this uh, crystal clear sleeve with the flap. But... It has, this is a very, very clean copy of this record. And um, has this nice soft touch paper. Ooh, very clean. Uh, I liked this record when I was young. It's still pretty good. You know, Tequila Sunrise is on there. I like that tune. Um, obviously Desperado and, you know, some other things. As far as I'm concerned, it's like their fourth or fifth best record. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> moving right along. A couple weeks ago, I spotted this record for 40 bucks. Thank God I didn't buy it. I've been looking for it forever. And I almost bought it. And I noticed it was a Columbia House pressing and was like, I'm not paying 40 bucks for nothing Columbia House. So I put it down. Some of you might have spotted it in uh, in the video. Uh, it was I had a hat sitting on top of it. Um, but it's hard to get. You don't see it very often. I found this minty, I mean minty copy of Bobby Codwell's um, uh, a record, I think it's just self-titled, On Clouds, here's what the label looks like, and, um, uh, everybody knows this record because it has, uh, What You Won't Do For Love, you know, it's got that thing, you know that, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, yeah, I've been looking for this. That's the rest of the album is just okay, but that song is a real heater. So, um, yeah, Bobby Codwell, uh, what you won't do for love on clouds, mint, dead mint, ten bucks, ten bucks right here. Woo! -wee. Uh, was happy to get that. Got this for $3. I know it's got to be more than $3. Bam! Stevie Wonder, music of my mind. Got Stevie on the front with the shades on, uh, with the reflections and stuff. This is a pretty clean, uh, very clean for $3. Uh, on, uh, however you say this, t t Tomla, Tomla, Tamla. Yeah. 
original pressing of the record. Really super stoked. I do like this record, um, but my favorite two Stevie Wonder records are, you guessed it, Inner Visions. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, f what is this called? Fulfillingness first finale. Okay, you got some different things on here, but Too High is on this, which is dope. And uh, Boogie on Reggae Woman, I believe, is on this. I could be wrong about that. But these are two funky Stevie Wonder records. And add this one in. You got yourself a Stevie Wonder trifecta. That's a trifecta. That's, Ken that's Kentucky speak, folks. You know, trifecta is like when you win big. <laughs> if you bet on the trifecta, never mind. I'm not going to explain it. Anyway, um, I went and saw um, Paul McCartney last night. Or, well, a few nights ago now. And then I found this. Boom. Red Rose Speedway. Oh, God, this is clean. So clean. Hype sticker. That's right. Um, on this cool custom wings label. Though I believe it's an Apple Records product. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. Manufactured by Apple Records. Yep. Boom. Oh, this is a pretty good record. Got this Harley Davidson engine here in the back. Uh, and uh, got the rose in his mouth. They were selling a t-shirt of this at the show, just Paul with the rose in his mouth. It looked so cool, but it was $80. The most expensive t-shirt at the show was 130 bucks. It was a tie-dye, and I was like, mm, yeah, I don't think I'm going to get a t-shirt tonight. <laughs> so, um, good show, good show, real good show. Um got this really excited i uh don't have my i've got a lot of uh beatles obviously i got all the beatles records i've got some john i've got some george didn't have much paul because on these commonly found records i wait as long as i can until i find an impossibly clean copy and this one had the hype sticker and everything and uh really really nice and I've been trying to find the impossibly clean copy of Band on the Run. I'll find it. This is a Wings record, by the way. Uh, it's not a Paul McCartney record. It is a Wings record. Cool. Very cool. Uh, where are we going next? Boom. Fresh cream. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking... Wait a minute now, Bob, you had to have fresh cream. There's a Lester Paulfus right here. And I'm like, I know, I did have fresh cream. Bam, it's right here. Guess what, folks? Quite a bit of ring wear on this. Quite a bit of ring wear. Uh, also, it was a cutout. Also, um, on this yellow label, at, yellow Atco label, um, I made a note in Discogs when I logged this in after I bought it. It said, never dig crates in the freezing cold. I must have uh, thought this was cleaner than it actually is. Uh, this is great trade fodder, but nowhere near as cool as this. This is really clean. Um, this is... Very, very nice uh, vinyl-wise. It is on a, uh, this label here, which is a, a interesting label. I think maybe from like uh, probably 67 or whatever. This is a pretty early copy and in great shape. So super stoked on this. You know, when it gets, there, seem, there is a bit of a theme going on. Uh, with Clapton on today's vinyl finds because he also played on this. Bam! 
Roger Waters, The Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking. If you've never heard this record, it's kind of like, um, I'm going to try to be nice about this. A lot of people really like this record. It's hard. It's not hard to get. I don't, I don't, I don't like calling things rare at all. Um, but there is a censored version of this with a little black box right over her butt. And uh, this is basically like a generic brand, The Wall. <laughs> okay? It's done in the same style as The Wall. Fake David Gilmour guitar playing. It sounds good, don't get me wrong. It's Eric Clapton on a lot of the tracks. Um, there's like that kind of... Rogers kind of singing in his normal singing voice and then there's like the uh, voices in his head are talking and stuff. It's very, it's very similar uh, to to The Wall but without all the great songs and stuff. But, it's a cool record. And uh, this is the uncensored copy obviously. <laughs> and I did find it for pretty cheap, so I was I was happy to have it. Uh, I pretty much anything Pink Floyd associated, I'll I'll get it. So so yeah, there's that. Super excited about this next one. Bam! Oh God! Oh God! Doctor John, the Night Tripper. Super mad at whoever M N is. As you can see, they had no choice but to put their initials right here on the front of the, one of the most killer covers of all time. This is rare. Uh, I, no, I'm sorry. I'll take that back. This is hard for me to find. I never find this. It is so dope looking. This is uh, original pressing on Atco. Yellow label. Let's take a look at the back because it looks so cool. I am a Dr. John um, person. By the way, did I mention that this record is called The Sun, Moon, and Herbs? Here is the back. Yeah, it's badass. This thing is badass. Okay, and um, as far as the audio that is actually on the record, it's very uh, kind of dark, uh, voodoo, uh, swamp music, you know, and um, pretty chill. Eric Clapton plays on a lot of these tracks. This is our third Eric Clapton associated record of the day. Eric Clapton, obviously, Eric Clapton. All three of these records feature Eric Clapton on the guitar at some point. Uh, so, yes, yes, The Night Tripper. Look at this. This is dope. This is so awesome. Um, other, other, oh. <laughs> other Dr. John records that I think are super sweet. Boom. Dr. John in the right place. This is a promo, see? Um, yeah, this is what this is a good enough time to get into this. Um, I've been going through some of my records and trying to figure out trade fodder and stuff and cutting it a little bit, you know, cutting down some of the collection. I had this regular copy, very clean. Uh, Tommy Clark did write his name on the label here. Uh, it's kind of the, you know, I don't know what the deal was. I wasn't alive when people, uh, I wasn't old enough. I don't know why people constantly wrote. I know the excuse for it. So your record didn't get mixed up with everybody else's. Guess what? Uh, I'm calling bullshit on that. I mean, th look at this. This MN that the guy wrote on the front here. Do you think that that's really going to help him discern? I mean, come on. He just ruined that uh, for no reason. Anyway. Sorry, I'm raging out. I'm raging out there. Um, so I had this one. Really clean. The vinyl's really clean. Uh, really nice. Tommy Clark wrote his name on the label. But then, a while ago, I found this. It's a promo, DJ promo copy. And it is, the vinyl is perfect. Um... So I think I got to keep this one, right? The promo, right? 
I got maybe let this one go. Uh, anyhow, I think that's where it's going to go. But as far as Dr. John is concerned, I like that one. Uh, I like this Bonnaroo record right here. Uh, if you hadn't seen, it's got all the foil on the front of it and stuff. Also on that yellow Atco label. Uh, if you see either of these two Dr. John records, you should definitely get them. Um, and if you see this one, you gotta get it. I mean, the sun, moon, and herbs. Come on. Come on. You gotta get it. Uh, that's a badass record. Uh, okay. That said, uh, before we get into the last record I found, let's uh, finish up talking about um, some... some uh, this is how idiocentric and OCD I am about a lot of this junk. So I have this U.S. pressing of Dire Straits uh, record, the Dire Straits record, and um, Hype Sticker, In the Shrink, Dead Mint, right? Dead Mint, Dead Mint, okay? Had this forever. But I also have um, this, another copy, but this one is on Vertigo. Let's see if I can get that out so you can see that label in its full glory. Boom. On the Vertigo label, And, you know, I can't keep everything. You know, I, I can't. I've got to, um, I've got to get rid of some stuff. This one is technically valued. It's very clean, by the way. The, the vinyl is dead mint. Um, so is this one, though. And this one has a hype sticker. It's in shrink. But this is on Vertigo. It's worth like $3 more than this one. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. Uh, tell me in the comments, should I keep the Vertigo or should I keep the the dead, dead mint U.S. pressing? Um, both are very nice. Last, uh, in these trade, uh, trade fodder dilemmas. Uh, this isn't really too much of a dilemma. Uh, I got the Nightfly and the Super Saver Series Nightfly. Now, the thing about it is, this thing is, uh, I believe it's sealed. No, it's not. It's just in the shrink. Still got the Super Saver sticker on it. Um, this, as you can, a lot of people don't notice this, but see how both of the uh, the words Donald Fagan and the Nightfly are in blue? Well, over here, this is like turquoise in blue. So, this is the copy I've been holding on to. This is the one I had in case I had a friend that I felt like needed the night fly. <laughs> Turns out none of my friends have needed the night fly yet. Um, I love this record. And I think I just, I'm, okay. I'm just gonna sell, I'm just gonna sell the Super Saver one. I mean, I don't. <sighs> okay, anyway. Last but not least, the last thing I found this week was, boom, this Jack White Lazaretto 2014. This is the kitchen sink version of this record. It's like the ultra one that has um, hidden tracks on the inlaid in the labels. Uh, side one plays in reverse. There's a hologram in the run out. Um, what else? A uh, couple of the songs are in locked grooves. Uh, at least one of the song has uh, two different intros that you can kind of pick which one and it goes into the track. Uh, one of the sides of the record is uh, they did something to it to make it look like an unplayed 78. Let me show you that. It's pretty sweet. I don't know if you're going to be able to tell, but this side of the record has like a brushed finish to it and it makes it look more like a 78 uh, as opposed to 
what it is, <laughs> which is 33 in the middle. This side here has the uh, hologram in the run out, but, and plays in reverse, which is, you do have to be careful and drop your needle. I don't, uh, uh, I like to just put it right on the first, you know, not even screw around, just like kind of miss a few seconds of the first track, just so I don't have my uh, stylus bumping around in that run out on those hologram scratches. But, uh, Highball Stepper, Lazaretto is on this. This is a pretty strong record. Um, wasn't that big of a fan of Jack White's last record, but uh, I surely was of this one. And uh, looks great, looks great, looks great. So, yeah, it's got some type of special printing process. I mean, he, I mean, they really did. They put the kitchen sink on it. Uh, in on this sucker uh it says that in the run out kitchen sink because uh they did all the tricks and it's really pretty slick it's pretty cool so jack white lazaretto <clears throat> um yeah that's everything i've uh, been listening to this earthless <clears throat> black heaven yeah guess what Bam! Clear and black splatter. What? Yes. Um, yeah, it's a super cool record. If you're not uh, hip to Earthless, check them out. Because they are really awesome band. Speaking of awesome bands, the band that I play in, Condors in the System, just put out a record called Music from the Eagle Nebula. It's on every platform. Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, whatever. Google Play, YouTube Music. Uh, it's, it's on SoundCloud, Bandcamp, blah, 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 blah. It's everywhere. There's no physical product yet. Um, but if you'd like to hear it, it is available everywhere. I will link to it in the comments below. Very excited about it. Been working on it for a long time. Um, when there are, I guess we're going to probably do some CDs, and um, with any with with luck, at some point, hopefully a vinyl release. As you probably all know, vinyl is incredibly cost prohibitive, and um, you know it's it's very difficult to um, get the, the funds up to do a vinyl release. If we can sell enough digital copies uh, or CDs, which will be very limited, we will do a vinyl release. But um, for now, it is just available everywhere on the internet. It's on every streaming service. Everywhere you buy music, it's available. Condors in the system, music from the Eagle Nebula. Until we meet again, thought out.